And that's how I got to have my own show. Tall. Now, of course, if you think not every problem can be fixed with it, it just means you're not using it right. Class plaque emu. I find it a shame that cloning technology was banned. It had such potential. Captain, you of all people should understand that. Captain, sorry to interrupt, but it's time for the results of the Easter egg hunt. Right, you are, Commander. Hey there, Captain Mutant here. And doesn't a week go by fast? Hmm. The temporal displacement field is functioning as it should, Captain. Well, that's just a figure of speech, McLuck. Oh, right. You've waited a week for the results of our little Easter egg hunt, so it's time to reveal the answers. To start with, we ask you what our ship runs on and when this was first mentioned. Turns out, it was all the way back in May 21 when the Captain announced the start of the expanded mutant universe. Hey, McLuck, what does the engine run on? Corn, of course. Look how young we looked back then. Camera angle was a bit off, though. Yeah, it took a while to perfect that. The second question was when did we first hear the computer's voice? This was actually in a fairly recent sketch called Lust in Translation. Computer, disable subtitling feature. Unable to comply. Hmm. Next, we're looking for the name of the galley and when it was first referenced to as such. The answer is... Absolute zero. Probably in reference to the quality of the food. Hey, that's not very nice. It's actually a reference to the unachievable lowest temperature in the universe. It can get pretty cold in space. And to get back to answering the question, it was first mentioned pretty recently when we celebrated the Captain Stargate having reached 10,000 supporters in January of this year. Woohoo! You did it again, Captain! Thanks, GG. Although it has been a week since my LEGO Ideas target reached 10,000 supporters. Well, we must be stuck in a time loop down here in Absolute Zero, because we're still celebrating! <laughs> Mega fans of our channel will know Absolute Zero is also the name of the galley of the captain's LEGO planetary outpost. Jess didn't waste any time and rushed to the galley, which the crew have named Absolute Zero. Ah, oh, that sure brings back memories. Next, we were wondering if you knew when we first featured the ship's holodeck. Oh, this happened when we were chatting about the Lego gift with purchase, Ray the Castaway. Ah, oh, this is the life. Computer, and program. Wait, what? You mean we hadn't actually left the ship? Could it not have been when you were avoiding talking about your Lego robots in the video called MIA? Where the hell can he be? <laughs> Don't worry, my robots are all ready and I'll start the series next time, I promise. But I had to conclude this procrastination trilogy somehow. Excellent find, Commander. But it wasn't explicitly stated that it was a holodeck. For all you guys knew, I could have been hiding on a nearby planet. Where did you hide then? That would be telling. We then moved on to exploring the various changes to our format, like when did the captain first appear on camera? The answer was for Nick Vass's interview. Nature. It's fantastic. Well, technically, it happened in the first trailer preview of that video five days previously. Hey there, Captain Mutant here. I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to speak to Lego designer Nick Vass about his wonderful bonsai tree. Picky McClock, but either answer would have been good. The Captain, he was all on his lonesome, so he brought in a team. And we wanted to know who were the original crew members who joined him when the expanded mutant universe was introduced. In order of introduction, it was me. This is Commander Fennec. Hey, he'll be handling movie and TV show reviews. Then myself. Dr. Bamboo, who'll be chatting about science. Hello. Then me. Ensign Mouse, we'll be talking about IT. Because I'm a mouse and it's IT, get it? And then me. And Chief Engineer McClug, who'll be, uh, what will you be doing exactly? I'll be making sure this bucket of bolts of an engine doesn't explode every five minutes. Wow, you were just as grumpy back then. But you do sound different. Space travel puts a strain on the vocal cords. Oh, I did not know that. But it wasn't long before more crew members appeared, as was the subject of the seventh question. The first new addition was me, in the video chatting about our progress over on TikTok. How about I bake a souffle? Chef Gigi, who let you out of the galley? I just wanted to be part of the celebrations. And who's baking the celebratory cake while you're not at your post? Sorry. 
hard to believe you weren't actually part of the original team. I know, right? The next one was me, when the captain chatted about LEGO's revamped online bricks and pieces system. Hey there, Captain Mutant here. And is LEGO's new and improved parts ordering service everything we've been clamoring for? Or just lipstick on a pig? Wait, what? Talk about a short cameo. You think that is short? I did not even speak when I came on board when you guys chatted about your sick figs for the first time. Hmm, Stargate 80, Stargate 80. Who could we be picking up from Stargate 80? <laughs> Ich war der Nächste. Is the Universal Translator ever going to work for him? It seems unlikely at this stage. Helmut made his appearance at the end of the video celebrating my Stargate having reached 10,000 supporters. Can you microwave me a tin of baked beans? I'm feeling peckish. Coming right up. Bist du verrückt? Das ist sehr gefährlich. Oh, he gave me quite a fright that time. And me. And finally, it was time for Beboop to arrive on the scene in the Lost in Translation sketch. Uh... Beboop, our new junior communications officer. Flax, poor Blavax, T.I.O.L. Pink Break. The more credit we got, the greater the potential for mayhem. Plus, Commander Fennec was doing more and more reviews, leaving the rest of us out of the loop. So, starting with Star Trek Discovery's Galactic Barrier episode, we began to guest star on his videos. Isn't the Galactic Barrier supposed to give you super telekinetic powers if you go into it? <gasps> really? <laughs> It was me, I forgot I was the first, and I was even the first and only person who tried to do an episode review myself for the Lower Decks episode, The Least Dangerous Game. Hey, Commander Gigi here, and this episode was a lot of fun. I think that proved we should all stick to what we do best. Oh, you no know fun. Our tenth question asked if you knew which video was the first to have a post credit scene. It happened to be our first and currently only viewer comments response video. Gigi's our chef, right? I hear Seti Alpha 5's got a pretty nice restaurant. On it. I'm beginning to think I'm the butt of all of these jokes. Nonsense, Gigi. You're a valued member of our team. Speaking of, our eleventh question asked if you knew when the concept of a G is for GG show was first mentioned. It was during the not quite ready video before the captain released his Lego robot series. What if I helped out by starting my own series? I'd call it G is for GG, and I could show people how to produce meals on a budget and shut, shut up, up GG. GG. Sorry. That was in April of last year, and five months later, in the viewer comments number one video. Maybe this calls for a new segment. Hello! Chef Gigi here, and I finally got my own show! Five months. You could say I put the G in Perseverance. But there is no G in Perseverance. Now, this channel is really about entertainment. And what's better than singing to entertain our viewers? Our thirteenth question asked if you knew in which video some of us burst into song. The first one was while reviewing Picard's Mercy episode. I think I'm a clone now. Cause every chromosome is a hand-me-down. Short and sweet. Then, Gigi and McClug got excited when the Captain's Target project reached 5,000 supporters. Hey there, Captain Mutant here. Wow! And we're halfway there. Well, live on a pair. Take my hand. We'll Shouldn't that be living on a prayer? Well, Let it go, mouse. They're bonding. Live on a pair. We were on a roll, so a few short vids later, during the review of Lower Decks Hear All, Trust Nothing, we did an homage to the famous Cheers song. Making your way in a quadrant today takes everything you've got. Sometimes you want to go back to your favorite space station. Do, 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 do. You want to see Kieran Reese playing with Cisco's ball. What the? Is baseball, dude. Oh, right. Carry on. You want to go back to DS9. And a little later, during the review of the Quantum Leap episode Stand by Ben, Gigi and McClug did an encore. Oh, darling, darling, stand by Ben. Well, stand by Ben. Just as long as oh boy. you stand 
Bye, Bye Ben. And by then, I really thought I should get in on the action. So during the video celebrating my Stargate reaching 7,500 supporters, Goodbye, Puppycorn. Though you helped me make a circle from square parts. I realized you weren't as stable as I'd heard. Hey guys, what's going on? And nothing since. Guys, that was like five months ago. Could explain why no one watches our videos now. It might be that, or it could be the fact that we haven't played my role-playing game in ages. Speaking of, the 14th question did ask when we first played it. How could I forget? It was at the start of my review of Lower Decks, The Least Dangerous Game. I beam onto the bridge and do my review. A transporter malfunction temporarily turns you into an amoeba, and Gigi is promoted to Minute Reviewer. What? Yay! Oh, that was fun. Was it? Well, let's move on to the 15th question, which was all about the times I played with minifigs on screen. Roll them! Now, we all know modern guns are verboten on LEGO ideas, and no, no, that's not even series accurate. Come on. Sorry. Oh, Daniel, help me. The captain's trying to take me away. Vella, I've told you there's nothing I can do. But Daniel... Don't you understand that nothing will ever happen between us? Mm -hmm. Oh, Daniel. Oh, Vella. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Gigi? Sorry. Chef Gigi. You have saved us once again. Oh, it was nothing. All I had to do was reverse the polarity of the chimichanko inside the mycelial flow. Clearly your knowledge of engineering is beyond compare. You should be the chief engineer, not me. Oh, really? Gigi, is dinner ready yet? Uh, it, we're working on it. We'll continue this conversation later. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not given you clairvoyance enough to find the tower's hidden location. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna have so much fun with this one. Come on, Vala, hop on. And let's go on an adventure. So this is what you've been doing instead of learning how to improve your cooking? Hey! My cooking is fine just as it is. Vanish unterbrechen darf. Hey, this is not the time. Anyway, maybe Gigi does not have his head in cooking books is because he has secret dreams, you know. The subject of question 16. And funnily enough, we saw one of them in one of these clips as he dreams of becoming a chief engineer. Ha! Dream on. Mini. And the second dream was revealed in the first preview video of the interview with Marshall Julius. And now I need someone to edit the conversation. Why can't you do it? I have a ship to run. And I've got weekly reviews to do. I can do it. Me, me, me. I want to do it. Editing has been my lifelong dream. Yeah, and we know how that turned out. You're mean. Stop being mean. Moving on to the 17th question, which was a very personal one for me. How many siblings do I have? We chatted about it during the review of Prodigy's Preludes. Hey Mouse, I think it's high time you told me about your backstory. What? Now? While we're working? Sure. Why not? Okay then. It all started back when I was the runt of the litter, the youngest of 42. So the answer is... 41. Is that why you've got a 42 on your shirt? It was the only way our mothers could tell us apart. Fixing the ship was the 18th question, as we asked you which was my favorite work tool. We found that out in the first Sick Fig video. I see you put me in my favorite neoclassic space suit. I very much approve. And giving me a grumpy expression? Ugh, what can I say? I acknowledge that it fits. Glad to see you've given me my favorite tool. You have no idea how many times an adjustable wrench has saved us from total destruction. And then, my mighty wrench was seen or mentioned in various videos thereafter. An anti-corn kernel is stuck in the matrix flow chamber. Mouse, hand me my wrench! Where is it? Right there, by the... <gasps> GG! <laughs> that was awesome! Was this what's known as a filler episode? Yeah, the captain might be running out of ideas. Maybe it's time somebody else took over. Hey there, Captain Mutant here. Well, you asked for it, and now you're gonna get it. Whoa, no, McClock, that's not what I meant. Ah, the anti-corn containment field must be weakening in that area of the ship. 
I'll get right on it. We'll see about that. Right. Computer. Oh. No. No. Oh, that's not good at all. McClock, what have you done? You seem to have quite a lot of... unrepressed anger, Commander. Just don't try me, monkey. It's getting a bit tense in here. Better get to the next question. The 19th one asks why I started wearing a scarf. The answer could be found in the review of the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. Oh man! What is it, Pascal? Drax wears a jacket now. Since when did his nipples become less sensitive? Plus, I'd model my entire look on him. You went above and beyond. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Are you wearing your scarf differently? Yes, I'm uh, pleased you noticed. Why? Well, a member of our audience told me he was distracted by my uh, nip-nips. But he's fine with the rest? Oh yeah, there's been no complaints. And with that, we've reached the final question, which was if you knew some of our first names. Mine was revealed when I chatted about Lego prices. I mean, forget about the damage to your wallet during a cost of living crisis for a moment. Seriously, guys and girls, where do you put all those bigger display sets? Michael, I've told you before, my cabinets are for medicines and surgical equipment only. You can't put your sets in here. Commander Fenix was mentioned twice. The first time was while reviewing the first Quantum Leap episode. What am I doing here? You're Commander Phileas Fennec, and you have to do a rev. Ew. Review of the newest Quantum Leap's pilot episode. What happens if I don't? You distract the engineer and the whole ship explodes. Oh boy. And the second time during the best Star Trek series of 2022 video. Captain, may I ask what you're doing? I'm about to beam out. Aren't you supposed to host a video today? You know what, Phileas? I just don't feel it. And our chief engineer has a rather unusual first name, revealed during the interview with Marshall Julius. JJ, when you're done, can I borrow your book? Abaddon, you can borrow it whenever you like. I have never heard of such a name. My mom took a liking to it while reading an obscure book. It means destruction or doom. Sounds pretty fitting. Right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. How many did you get right? Leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll speak to you next time. What? You're still here. Come on, have you seen the length of this vid and the research that was involved? We're all exhausted. Look, we most appreciate your dedication, but I for one really have to get back to maintaining the engines. You know how temperamental they can get. Maybe Gigi and Beeboop could entertain you. Guys, our store, McClock! Hello all, and welcome to our post credit show. Oh, Palak Stereo Amal Quinks to La Barak Two Seals. Uh, I know things are different where you come from, Bibu, but you can't really say these things in public. Talak Biskula Aspirang Amalike Poi Poi Pee Poi Palak Aspirang Click Click Click. Aloy Mod Spec Talak Bang Hoistikula Glag Pee Cook.